City Council District 7. Uh, so go ahead with a two-minute introduction. Okay. Um, my name is Gus Hartman, and I'm seeking election to a newly formed 7th District comprising downtown Belltown, uh, Queen Anne, and Magnolia. Um, and this is my first attempt to run for City Council. Um, and I'm particularly excited about the new district method. Um, and I think uh, having lived in these neighborhoods and you know been a part of them for this long, I think I have a very good feel for how the, the voters in this district will, you know, what matters to them. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of development in some of the neighborhoods. Um, we've seen increasing amounts of uh, congestion and traffic, um, an increased reliance on transit. And uh, these are issues I'm very passionate about, and um, I feel that I can bring uh, a new voice to represent this area. I can't see the time cards at all. Okay. <laughs> um, so, as you might imagine, green means you got plenty of time, yellow means you're running out, and red means stop. Or you got oh, Okay, there's. Um, okay, now I can see it. Um, oh, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, previously I had been a PCO for the 36th um, for a few terms. It was back in the, the early to mid 2000s, um, but was involved as a PCO going to the meetings. Um, I ran the caucuses for my precinct in 2004 and 2008. Um, so I've always been kept up on the issues. I've not been actively politically engaged in seeking office until now, but uh, this seemed like a good time to come in and try and make a difference. Um, I believe I have fairly strong uh, progressive beliefs, and I think those are well reflected in the electorate of the seventh. And I would like to help you know, bring these things to their time. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, try and bring to fruition. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so now we have our four prepared questions. Uh, these are two minute answers. Uh, Joseph, we start with number one. Sure. Seattle is experiencing a housing affordability crisis. Several policy responses have been suggested, including linkage fees, incentive zoning, subsidized housing, and rent control, amongst others. What is your approach to keeping Seattle affordable? Well, it, uh, we can take rent control off the table immediately because the legislature is never going to let Seattle decide that for itself. Um, so whether or not it's a, a correct solution for Seattle is a non-starter. Um, is it's not going to clear the legislature anytime soon. Um, I like the linkage fee. I'm not firmly committed to it as the correct way. Um, I think that more can be done. Uh, more concessions in some nature will come out of the developers. Um, the, the claim that people are going to, the development is going to stop in Seattle if developers have to provide more affordable housing or pay the linkage fee is clearly ludicrous on the face of it. We're the fastest big, fastest growing big city in America right now. And developers are not going to sit on their hands and ignore that um, when there is so much going on here. So I think it is reasonable to expect more of them to try and keep our, our neighborhoods uh, vibrant and effectively diverse um, even at an economic level. So. Um, it's an issue I feel pretty strongly about having watched even just, you know, the brief circle or, you know, the quarter mile around where I live has radically changed in a lot of ways. And I've seen longtime residents get forced out. Um, and I dislike how that changes the flow. I think that we should definitely, whether it's the link fee or whether it's uh, requiring more units, uh, I think the developers have concessions to make. And the council can enforce that. Um, Last year, voters approved the levy to fund a universal preschool pilot program. After the pilot concludes, how would you fund the full implementation of the program? And what policy changes would you make to assure this plan addresses educational disparities in our city? <laughs> So if I recall correctly, the pilot program was uh, an addition to the property tax, um, which if it has been successful um, and the voters did approve it by a fairly large margin, um, then I see no reason not to continue that. 
or increase it as if the program needs to scale. Um, universal pre-kindergarten is unequivocally one of the best things that can be done for children, um, proven repeatedly, um, and including uh, working in you know, lower income or less communities with less opportunity. Um, it's solidly proven, and it's the cost benefit of doing it to be completely cynical is so high in terms of lower social spending later, um, increased job opportunity, um, increased engagement with the community. Um, it's, I think, realistically, on the facts of it, any reasonable person, and as Seattle pretty much did, would be willing to pay for this. And I think including that in either the existing or expanding the current property tax rise. Um, I don't have the number offhand, but I think it's a reasonable way to focus it and a successful way to provide those opportunities universally through the city. Bertha is, Bertha is still stuck. What options does the city of Seattle have with respect to potential cost overruns, the waterfront, transit, and an unsafe viaduct? I don't think anyone knows what the city's uh, real possibilities are because that, that's a hot potato that keeps getting thrown back and forth. The state insists that Seattle's on the hook. Uh, Seattle, we were very clearly told we were not on the hook. Um, you know, we're now looking at something that's going to cost over on into the billions and realistically, you know, it hasn't moved in a year. We've not gotten sufficient explanations of why. Um, personally, at some point, uh, I would favor pulling the plug on it. Um, it failed to address several of the capabilities that be now terribly unsafe, but, you know, previously critical viaduct. Um, and I would favor uh, going to the, the surface level boulevard option, um, reconnecting the waterfront to the market and downtown, um, and increasing uh, traffic signals and transit to mitigate uh, the effects of uh, losing the capacity that a uh, highway or hypothetically the tunnel was going to provide. Um, since it skips downtown, it uh, doesn't really provide anything for all of the people who live and work there. Um, it's a complete bypass pretty much through what, knock on wood, would be my district. Um, and basically cut bait at this point. Um, we have to provide increased transit, improved traffic signals anyway for the unknown number of years that we're not going to have a tunnel. So we can better spend that money not on a quixotic infrastructure project built in the middle of a seismically active zone. Um, it's expensive, it was a bad plan, it cuts off downtown um, from the, the transportation corridor. Great, um, question number four. Uh, <clears throat> Seattle is the fastest growing big city in the country. Should we encourage or discourage this growth and what policy changes are necessary to accommodate growth? Um, so I think we should encourage the growth. Um, this has always been a city, you know, from the beginning, this is a city people, for the most part, moved to, leaving aside some occasional uh, bust periods. Um, I think we should want to be a bigger city, you know, to really effectively be the, the major, we're already the major city of the Northwest, but I feel that we could continue to be bigger, have a larger regional influence. Um, and if you look at the, the num current numbers, a lot of the people coming in, um, you know, they are predominantly younger. Um, they are, many of them are looking to live in, in more urban walkable environments. Uh, you know, the driver's license numbers for millennials have been plummeting. Um, they want to live in places where walking and biking and urban parks and you will have that kind of lifestyle and realistically in a lot of places that means we need to build up um, and again being able to increase the housing supply requiring developers to 
I, I prefer actually if they provide guaranteed affordable units instead of kicking into the fund necessarily. Um, it, worrying about uh, if they can just throw into the fund while well, the affordable housing is elsewhere, which again I feel is bad for communities. Um, there, some people throw a lot of blame on some of the places that have been built in the last five to ten years, um, and there's sort of misplaced nostalgia for how what some of these areas were. Um, the building that I live in five years ago was a one-story abandoned brick building taking up half a block. In the five years I lived next to it before that, I never saw a soul go in or out of it. And I don't think anybody can realistically tell me that that was a better use of land than six-story mixed use. Um, so I, I'm very much in favor of the city continuing to grow as long as we can maintain the culture and vibrancy. Great. So now we'll open it up to follow-up questions. These are one-minute answers. And I have one, and then Mary, and then Joseph. So I uh, have my favorite question that for years I've always asked of challenges to incumbents. So you're running against someone who, uh, I know it's a new district, but is currently on the city council. And no one is entitled to any particular office, but is there a particular reason why Sally Bagshaw should no longer be on the city council? Um, so, so I like to stay involved in, you know, local politics. You know, I'm, I'm, I follow it passionately. And now that we're going to the district model, um, one, it's a good time to shake things up. Two, I have literally no opinion on Sally Bagshaw. Like, I don't think she's bad. I don't think she's good. Nothing comes to mind. And that's not a good thing. You know, if she's going to be representing the district that I've lived in and intend to continue living in, hopefully for a very long time, I feel I should at least have some conception of the issues that she's into or things she's trying to campaign. Or even if I dislike them, I'd like to know. And I have to go out and dig around for it. You know, I just, I can't think, you know, if it doesn't come to me offhand what my representative, my council member is into, that worries me. Great. Uh, Mary and then Joseph. Yeah, you um, mentioned that you referred to issues that you were passionate about, and I wondered if you could give us some detail. You may have already done this, but it's a little hard to understand sometimes. Um, in the ways in which you've been involved in those issues in the past. Um, so I was actually one of the earliest members of the Transit Riders Union um, that a friend of mine uh, founded back in 2008. It's since changed management, but um, I'm still a, a member and, and uh, interested there. Um, in terms of, I, I'm not entirely sure what level, my activity level has been you know, anyway. donating campaigns, well, trying to volunteer, trying to flyer, um, you know, when things move me, um, corralling all of my friends to remind them to vote. Um, that's low level interested, you know, sort of very background -y. Great. Joseph? What would be the first piece of legislation you would introduce and how would you work to pass it? Um, I'm going to say uh, expanding on the imp the increases in transit that were uh, overwhelmingly passed last year with the transportation was it Seattle Transportation Metropolitan District. I forget the exact term, but we, we had the proposition um, and being allowed to uh, increase the amount of service, being able to pay uh, King County for uh, additional capacity um, if Right now, uh, especially in the seventh, or in many parts of the seventh, transit is either overfilled and insufficient for the need, or uh, at the the north end of it, you know, good luck getting a bus to Magnolia after you know a reasonable hour. So I would like to see uh, increases in transit that I believe the voters, um, once again, would be willing to support uh, with the same sort of funding that Prop One got. <clears throat> Additional questions? Yeah, quite, go ahead. Um, I'd like to pursue your stand regarding Bertha and the tunnel um, a little bit because because you say you would be willing to uh, fold the plug. Um, 
this is something that's easy to say and infinitely expensive to do um, in a construction project. Um, so I would like, I would like, I would appreciate it if you could um, work through the real alternatives in real time um, of, of actually doing what you, you say you're willing to do. The meaning, uh, the city would possibly be in breach of contract. The damage accruing to the contractor uh, could be in the hundreds of millions. Um, and the downtime in planning uh, is measured in years. So um, at least, if not decades. So, you know, I, maybe that's... Uh, the sound is cutting in and out. Um, I think I understand what you're getting um, in terms of uh, like the, the actual ramifications and that I realize what I'm saying. Is that the gist? Yeah, I'm. I'm asking you to 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 uh, perhaps uh, give us a more detailed version of your of your answer in terms of the real world consequences of terminating a construction contract of that magnitude. Well, um, I'd start with the question of at what point will they be in breach for failing to make any progress? Um, so I think it's not necessarily that the city will be the one ending up in, in breach. Um, and in the event that that does happen from their side, we obviously have to have a plan together, but leaving that aside, um, realistically, we have to go back to the legislature. Um, they wanted it, you know, it got passed, it got signed, but obviously the first step has to go there. Seattle can't unilaterally end this, but at the same time, even hypothetically, if we go into breach and it costs money to shut it down, no one knows what it's going to cost now. So it's, I, I think it may be an incorrect assumption to believe that those penalty, the penalties for stopping and effectively having the construction project to undo a construction project, um, I'm not convinced that those costs or liabilities would be worse. Um, the reason I originally favored uh, the boulevard option was that it was the most affordable and most likely to succeed. Um, Great, so um, additional questions for anybody? Or I have another one. So uh, Mary had asked about how you've advocated for the issues that are important to you. And I have sort of a somewhat different question, which is just sort of what sort of um, Groups have you been involved with in the community, whether it's you know, committees or boards or um, commissions or um, you know, a, a, you know a PTA or, or anything of that nature? Where have you sort of you know, dealt with people in the community in terms of experience for the city council? Um, I, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, very little. Um, uh, since you know, uh, after I stopped being a PCO. Um, I wasn't really involved in the district or, you know, having an actual official position in any sort of local politics. Um, the most civically engaged thing that I'm probably doing on a regular basis now is I'm volunteering with a Cub Scout pack on Queen Anne. Um, and, you know, so that's you know, part of my community and people that I know and am interested in. Um, but in terms of commissions or their local organizations. Uh, quite honestly, I write checks. That's that is the level of engagement I've had. Perfect. Yeah, Joseph, go ahead. So, going from that level of civic involvement to running for office and potentially being a city council member is quite a leap. Why did you make it? Because I think I can. Um, you know, this I. I'm not running as a nuisance, can nuisance candidate. Um, I wouldn't be willing to commit my time and energy to this if I didn't think I could. Um, and that's to be able to get out and to take a more active role in the issues that I care about. And I am not afraid to try and make a big jump. 
Great, so we're about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Um, so again, I'd like to, to thank the 36th for uh, hearing me out. Um, I realize that I am a long shot candidate, but I don't think I'm a frivolous one. Um, I think I am an interesting, represent an interesting cross section of what will now be the seventh. And I think bringing uh, strong progressive values um, to try and advance making Seattle an even better place to live than it is now and addressing some of our core growing issues right now. So that's, that's my pitch. Thank you for listening and I would appreciate your votes and endorsements. Great, thank you very much.